The book is The Center Holds, Obama and His Enemies, and author Jonathan Alter is here to talk about this chronicle of the 2012 election and some of the governing that surrounded it. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you. I uh, wanted to start with a little quote and get you to, to respond okay. to it, because this part struck me. You write, most of the time he, meaning Obama, was pretty much the same calm and self-contained guy inside the bubble as he was in public, with one big exception. In public, Obama rarely chose to talk about being the first black president, but in private, it was never far from the surface. What is different in private in the way he discusses this stuff? Well, you know, he's very clear about needing to be president of all the people uh, and not the president of black America, um, but he doesn't like to talk about that too much uh, in public. So what this very close advisor told me on background without his name attached uh, is that because he's African American, the president can't swing at every pitch that he wants to. Otherwise, he plays into the hands of his enemies. Uh, and they just go, well, there, you know, there's another angry black guy. Now he's president. You know, so he has to kind of hold back from swinging when he, when he would want to. And that that, having to do that makes him, this guy said 5% more aloof. I'd say maybe 10, 15% more aloof than he is to the people who've known him for a long time. I've known him for a long time. I'm from Chicago originally. Uh, and, uh, you know, my impression of him is as a warmer, less aloof guy than he comes across in public. Here's the thing I don't understand about the aloofness, and you describe it as lacking the, the schmooze gene yeah. and that it, it's one less tool in his toolkit right. as a politician. As someone who's so clearly very intelligent and very ambitious and very concerned about pushing his agenda across, why in the world doesn't he just fake it? Like, how hard can he it be? He does fake it. He just fakes it. Just not very well, I he guess. He fakes it. No, actually, when he needs to, like when he went to fundraiser, sometimes six a day during the campaign, he was faking it really well. He was, you know, you felt like he really wanted, if you were a rich guy, and you really wanted to hear what you had to say, even, even though he didn't. Um, so he can fake it. Uh, the problem is, it doesn't come naturally to him. So at one point in, in the book, he says, uh, you know, why do they need a third picture of me? They've already got two pictures <laughs> of me with them. Do they really need a third? And the answer to that question uh, is yes, because politicians are needy and they need the stroking and they need the attention. And he just, it's an abstraction to him. It's not something that he truly understands because in that sense, he's not one of them. He's not a politician at heart, which is one of the reasons why he's successful is the public understands that he's not just another politician, that he's a little more genuine than that. But what helps him outside of Washington, helped him get reelected, hurts him a lot inside Washington. Because you've got to be a good, attentive politician inside Washington. And in his first term, he wasn't enough of that politician. Uh, last thing, you have this nugget uh, where apparently former President Bill Clinton called up Mitt Romney afterwards and said, Hey man, I thought you were going to win until Hurricane Sandy and some of the stuff that happened. Yeah, he did. did not apparently. That did happen. That did happen. Yeah. Okay. So, so the question is, is the, the question is, was he sincere or was he just trying to make Romney feel better? And there's no way to really answer that question. But he did make that call uh, to Romney, and he he was not as in touch with, you know, Bill Clinton himself doesn't use a, a computer. But what the Clinton thing made me wonder is, he's obviously a very gifted politician. But if you're, say, maybe his spouse running for president three years from now, is he maybe not as great an advisor as you might think? If he well, couldn't even he, figure out who was going to be president because he doesn't have a computer. You know, I have a number of examples in the book where he's, he's, and it says a lot of nice things about him, especially that amazing speech he gave at the convention. But uh, on some of the political issues, he can be a little rusty. And I think we saw that in 2008. But, you know, she doesn't just get advice from him, and she doesn't listen to everything that he says. Uh, but he... His political mind is not to be underestimated, too. I think he can shake the rust off in a hurry when, when he needs to. Um, I think the bigger problem with uh, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton is that he's emotionally involved in the way he was in 2008, and that can cloud your, your political judgment. Uh, it's, it's, he's better when uh, it's either him, which he was used to calculating the uh, political angles, or somebody else, where he's still quite brilliant a lot of the time, when it's his wife, it gets more emotionally fraught, as, as we saw, say, in the South Carolina primary in 2008. Okay, the book is The Center Holds, Obama and His Enemies. Uh, Jonathan, thanks so much for thanks, talking Thanks about for it. having me. It was fun. Okay.
Uh, that is it for us. We will full things up. Hope to see you back here tomorrow.